morning students welcome to our class biological science dear students in the previous class we have discussed about reproduction we have already completed about about sexual reproduction and asexual mode of reproduction now we are discussing about spore formation Uh, what are the other modes of reproduction? So in this one we have already discussed about the rise of fungi. Okay. So in the previous activity we have we developed a bread mold, a common mold, a rhizopus in our control environment. We all are know very well how do we, how did we develop that one? So in that activity develop the rhizopus or to examine the rhizopus a common mold in a given. environment so take a slice of bread and place it in a plastic bag and sprinkle water water over it and seal the bag by leaving some air inside after few days that means the good mold requires for to 10 days which can go in its best environment after that take a little scrap of it and observe on a slide under the microscope We notice that one, the fine thread-like structures, the whitish thread-like structures, and blackish powdery substances are there. One. So in the activity we discussed how to develop that rhizopus or common mold. In this class, I am going to explain how do we observe that rhizopus in the school under the microscope. So our aim is to examine. to observe rhizopus which was developed by you apparatus we required common mold slide toothpick microscope glazing wow what a job Water. So these are the materials we have taken. In the procedure, roughly I wrote on the board. Follow your textbooks. After developing the bread mold in your home, we are examining it. We are going to observe that specimen. Okay now, take a slide and add one drop of water at the center. First point, take a slide and add one drop of water at the center. Second one, by taking a toothpick, by taking a toothpick, pointed one, by taking a toothpick, scrape the little little of the bread mold and place in the drop of the water. Okay, na? By using the toothpick, scrape a little amount from the bread of slice or slice of bread and place on this one. Drop of water. Third one. Take a cover slip and set it at an angle to the slide. So one edge of it touches the water drop and carefully lowers the cover slip on it without formation of any bubbles. Otherwise, you can say in your own. Place cover the cover the drop of water with cover slip. Place the cover slip on the drop of water without formation of air bubbles. And fourth one, observe this one under the microscope. So okay, now observe the micro um, slide under the microscope. Before going to that, wipe the wipe excess of water by using a blotting paper. Okay, the first one is take a drop of water at the center of the slide, and second one is by using a toothpick, snap a little amount of rhizopus or common mold and place it on the water drop. The third one, set it, take a cover slip and set it at an angle to the drop of water. Set it an angle to the drop of water. So one end, one edge of the slip, cover slip, put touches the. <coughs> 
That's just the slide and the lawyers sit carefully without formation of a bubbles. Otherwise, I already told you that you can write this point in an easy way. Take a cover slip and cover without formation of air bubbles. Okay, fourth one. Wipe the excess of water by taking a blocking paper. Next, observe the slide under the microscope. So, you may notice that one. We have already discussed that. Okay, fine white thread like structures and blackish powdery substances. Okay, in this diagram, the thread like structures is called hype. What is that? The fine white thread like structures is called hype and the knob like structure is called sporangia. Sporangia means singular. Okay, it is sporangium. The spores are present in the sporangium. You understand? By observing the glass slide under the microscope, you may notice that fine thread like structure is called hype and knob like structure, ball like structure, sporangium. In the sporangium, the spores are present. When the spore case is burst and the sporangium is burst, the spores are entered into the air. When they fall under favorable conditions like ground or water or in the soil, it grows. Do you understand? So, by falling on it, unfortunately, fell down on ground or in the soil or in the food molecules under the favorable conditions, develops in its individuals. Do you understand? I already told you that rhizopus produces hundreds of microscopic reproductive units called spores. Follow this point, rhizopus produces reproductive units, microscopic reproductive units called spores. So in this way, the rhizopus, that means the microorganism, common old rhizopus, reproduce its number. Okay. <clears throat> now we are going to discuss about sexual mode of reproduction. Sexual mode of reproduction. Dear students, from the so far we are discussing about the asexual mode of reproduction, where it involves a single gamete and no fission of gametes and no zygote is developed. From the sing single organism, from the uh, that means from the female organism, the zygote is developing, the new baby is developing. It is anti different to the sexual reproduction. Now we are entering into the sexual mode of Reproduction. <coughs> sexual reproduction is a mode of reproduction where it involves the fission of gametes. So fission of male and female gametes takes place. Fission of gametes takes place by fertilization. Do you understand? So sexual mode of reproduction, it is a mode of sexual reproduction is a type of reproduction where involves the fission of gametes by the process of fertilization. Okay, so the fertilization, if the fertilization occurs either outside of the body of female organism, so this fertilization occurs outside of the body of female organism. It is called external fertilization. If the fertilization occurs inside of body of female, inside of body, it is called internal fertilization. You understand? So, on the basis of the fertilization takes place either outside of the body or inside of the body, the fertilization categorized into two types, external fertilization and Internal fertilization. Do you understand? Here, if the fertilization occurs either outside of the body of female organism, it is called external fertilization. We can see this type of reproduction in the fish and frogs. Okay. 
we can see internal fertilization if the fertilization takes place inside the body of female organism that is called internal fertilization the example birds mammals humans etc do you understand here we may think that what about the birds the birds releasing the eggs outside and the babies come out from the egg don't you think like that as a matter of fact the birds are the eggs of land animals the eggs of the land animals either bird or the reptile or whatever it is the birds of the land animals do you understand the eggs of the land animals fertilize inside the body of female organism okay and then they grow and it divides their cells and develops into the zygote do you understand as a matter of fact the eggs of the land animals like birds and the other animals which lay the eggs oviparous animals the eggs are fertilized inside the body of female organism okay and then uh, the egg uh, divides uh, the number of the cells that present in the egg divides and uh, produce the zygote okay so <clears throat> Here there is an important question. Why do fish and frog lay more number of eggs? Why do fish and frog produce more number of eggs? That is external fertilization. Okay, external fertilization is the common mode of reproduction. External fertilization is the common mode of reproduction in the animals like aquatic animals like fishes and amphibians, frogs. Okay, here I already explained or I already told you a question. Why do the fish and frogs produce hundreds of eggs? Okay, now most number of eggs. What is the reason behind it? Because the reason is external fertilization. Okay? The external fertilization takes place in aquatic animals like fishes and amphibians like frogs. Okay? In this type of reproduction, the female animal produces eggs in the water. The female animal lays eggs in the water. On them, the male organism reproduces. A male organism produces millions of sperms on it. Millions of sperms on it. As a matter of fact, the chance of fertilization is controlled by the nature. Because of that, these animals produce hundreds of, that means more number of eggs and millions of sperms. That is the reason. Okay, if it is not produced more number of eggs and it produces like us, either two or three babies or two or three eggs, what will happen? Some of the eggs may be eaten by the predators and some of the babies may be eaten by the predators. Some of them are perished by the floods <coughs> or the tidal water. What will happen? They lost their species. Their species will be disappeared. Because of that, the fish and fox lay more number of eggs in the water. The female organism produces hundreds of eggs in the water. On them, the male organism produces millions of sperms on it. As a matter of fact, the chance of fertilization is under the control of nature. Under the control of nature. Because of that, it is very important to produce the inevitable. Inevitable. That means more number of eggs. In your textbooks, inevitable is there. More number of eggs must be produced by these animals. Do you understand? So, dear students, up to now we discussed all these things. Here we have to come to one conclusion, one conclusion about the sexual reproduction and asexual mode of reproduction. So, I am already writing here. <coughs> Sexual reproduction and asexual reproduction. Okay, come to it. Here, formation of gametes takes place. Gametes. No formation of gametes. <coughs> Single. So, sexual. Two. Are more organisms involved? Here, single organism involves. Fusion of gametes takes place. 
fusion anode. Gametes takes place here. No fusion takes place. Okay. In this case, it takes a long time. Or a period of time is there. For example, for human beings, 270 to 80 days. For rat, 20 or 25, 16 to 25 days. Like that. Here, very quick, no long time, very quickly occurs. Okay? New characters will develop. Here, no new characters develop. Evolution chance is there. Here, no evolution takes place, but a matter of fact, a change of materials may take evolution. So, dear students, a lot of differences are present among the sexual and asexual mode of reproduction. Okay, so dear students, up to now, this is enough. You can follow your textbooks and learn more about it. If you have any doubt, make a phone call to me. Okay, thank you, thank you very much.